I met Ibaka Saka and how they told me at one point uh, Lake Calhoun was named after a slave. And it was funny to me because I thought, well, I had the question when slaves became free, if, you know, under the education of Minnesota when we were created, if during the notification process did some people not get notified appropriately that they were free and those people retained records, you know, and they claimed that they owned black people because they felt like slavery was going to come back. And those people could have been from Minnesota. And those people under the Minnesota Constitution might have owned slaves, but not necessarily told them they were free, right? So, in theory, one day I thought, well, maybe I was owned. Because people was playing games, right, with my name and my social security. I don't want to go into too many details, but it was just a bad feeling. So I thought I'd ask the government, right? Because if a slave who didn't sell their slaves to the government, because I thought that's how social security numbers became inactive. Like the government just gave a bunch of slave owners a big payout at the time when slaves became free. And then not everybody took that payout. Some people held, hung on to their ownership of slaves, thinking, well, slavery's coming back, right? You know, because under a new government, it could come back. So those people could have just hung on to their records. So I had this brain fart. I said sometimes when my brain farts, it stinks. And that day it stunk because I thought to myself, well, in my own, right? And then I posed the question in an email. Then I wrote it down. I took a picture and posted it on my Twitter page, right? Because I thought, well, under that ideology, you know, somebody like Barb Johnson could think she owned me and my family. And she could think that all my settlements would do her, right? So I needed the government to tell me Barb Johnson didn't own me as a slave. And when they got to talking about, for me, Lake Calhoun being a slave master's name and how it was on native land and how the natives wanted their land back in the city of Minneapolis State of Minnesota specific to their culture, heritage, um, they started, you know, changing the name at Lake Calhoun because there was a slave owner who, you know, created that lake. And then they pointed out how Patrick Henry, the school I graduated from, happened to be a slave owner's name and how that slave owner gave us public school, right? Patrick Henry. And then he named it after himself as a slave owner who gave his slaves education. That was my father. So I thought to myself one day, well, maybe I wanted my master, you know, not if it was a person. Because not under theory did all people own slaves and treat them well. Some slave owners really treated their slaves bad, but then some slave owners found a heart, wanted to free the slaves, they fell in love with the slaves. The slaves were now educated, speaking their language, working with them, helping them, because they got to live a great life on their land compared to some slaves down the road. So some owners of slaves now actually want to free their people, right? And they fought beside these people in the Civil War to get our black asses free, right? That's what I thought one day. So I thought those white people were helping me, right? Because I'm a free nigga. Well, because they freed the slaves, number one. And number two, you can't own no person. It's under the law. Not just that slaves were free, but you cannot own a person under the law. People are not property. Do you know that the United States gave you freedom and that meant that you could have your own religion? That they was allowing people who liked America in America and those that came to be of America was not allowed in America, but sometimes people went to other countries, married other people, brought these people back. Does that mean they hate America because their country hates us? Or did they fall in love with America? Because you know, under the Costa Nova Act, where I thought a specific judicial official wrote a uh, constitution for another country, where it was similar to American constitution, but then they removed 
some of the things they didn't like, and they called it the Cosa Nova Act. And how, if you went against the government, you could be shot or killed under the dictatorship. I was getting that Susan Fire beauty shot, not you. So I didn't want her on my film. She was covering her face. That meant that she didn't want to be on my phone because she felt like I was taking a video, which I was, but I wasn't trying to get her. I was getting that beauty shot where I said Susan Fire under the STEM program using the science and technology after the mechanics tampered with that car. You know, it could break down going to the left or it could break down going to the right. And under science and math, let's dictate on paper where Sharon is going to land in that car. And then the winners will get a scholarship. Yeah! So I landed next to, next to Susan Files hair shop, her Asian family, where I said the PPL who gave me that computer, Josh, under the mixed kids with Martin Luther King group was now profiting and benefiting from, you know, uh, Rock Shana Pricey suit, Hindi Hussein. I didn't like Rock Shana, but I liked Hindi at one point. I wanted Hindi to be the head doctor at Fremont until I asked Hindi to write a letter about my grandson and his guardianship. And then I felt like she was under him on Omar and Bobby calling me a bad parent, not saying it to my face, but in the brotherhood of, you know, Michael Favors. Did I talk about the brotherhood? I said that under the brotherhood of Michael Favors, he told my son he was going to show my son who I was, and it took him eight years to get me to fuck a phone because they told my son in Mary Johnson Roy uh, presence with Linda Baker's presence that I was a drug addict like my mama and they were going to expose me right and Michael Cooper Sr who I said might have been fucking some bitch for as long as he was fucking me uh, was now working with Michael Cooper Sr to slander my name and fame my great character and I thought they lived in 24th and 5th when the police officer in Tanya Bransford got me uh, removed or maybe it was Andrea because he was always going to 24th and 1st where the pizza man got shot, right? I thought, well, maybe Michael Cooper Sr. could have been fucking with Katrina, who was up above me, you know, and that could be Bobby's people. And then Andrea, who was in uh, law school at the time, actually shot the pizza man, proving that her law degree was better than a lot of people's because she didn't get caught and she was showing power with the gangs on 24th and 1st. You know, and then Tanya Bransford helped get me put out, and then they had me uh, do time in jail day, right? But see, I didn't remember getting a ticket from Sears. I don't remember getting a ticket from Target. Those were two stores I got caught stealing at under the age of 18, where all I thought I got was a trust pass. Keith Ellison, Bobby Joe Champion, Dawn Samuels, Andrea Faulkner, Tanya Bransford. Sheriff Narduli was now just a sheriff. I said, I thought you should be the first sheriff. You didn't want to be the first sheriff? Black, the black sheriff? You let Ted, what's her name? The one of the wit get it. What's her name? She was at MCTC under, you know, Ilhan Omar, being a strong black woman. Flexing, saying I could come and meet her right there versus in jail. I said, bitch, you'll shoot me first, won't you?